is good everybody welcome to an epic my damn toys video today i have your wwe payback 2020 full show review and results for you guys as you guys know if you guys have been here on the channel before we're going to run through the entire wwe payback 2020 show letting you guys know my personal thoughts and reactions to everything that took place on the show this show comes a week after SummerSlam. you know usually that's not the case at all SummerSlam is usually a really big blow off and then we have a little bit until another pay-per-view that is not the case this year we have payback a week after SummerSlam. Tons of great stuff coming in. I'm actually more excited for Payback than I was for SummerSlam, which is absolutely absurd. But we had the return of the big dog. We have Keith Lee. We have Matt Riddle. We have a lot of great things on this card that I was really looking forward to. Would it live up to the hype? And would it be as great as I thought it would be going into the show? We're going to find out here together. I'm going to give you my own thoughts and opinions on every match going in. What I thought of the few. What I think of the matches that took place. Where I think we go from here. My reactions to everything. And everything in between. If we get any sick-ass attires or anything like that, I will let you guys know everything there is to know about Payback 2020 and what exactly happened at the show. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and dive into Payback 2020 and find out together, was this show worth a damn? Was it fantastic or was it somewhere in between? Let's find out together. So starting things off on the kickoff show, guys, they actually had a tag team match between the Riot Squad, the newly reformed Riot Squad, between Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan taking on the Iconics. I only caught the tail end of this matchup, but everything I saw was super botchy. It looked very unorganized. It was just really slow paced, and it just did not look very good. But it apparently worked out for the new Riot Squad because they picked up the win. Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot win. Then they get on the pre-show panel, and they were talking about how they're back, and this is the start of their careers, and that, you know, this is a revitalization for us. You know, will that come to be? We'll have have to find out, but I did not really enjoy this matchup, and I don't think we really needed this on the kickoff show for Payback. Alright guys, so Payback started out the main show with the United States Championship match between Apollo Crews taking on Bobby Trashley and the Hurt Business was at ringside, which they were banned from ringside at SummerSlam when MVP took on Apollo Crews for the U.S. Championship. I thought they, they would play a role in this matchup. You know, they were next to the commentary table, wearing their suits, looking pretty damn good out there. Apollo Crews and Bobby Lashley, this was a pretty solid opener, guys. I'm not going to bullcrap with you. Very hard hitting, very physical, some very unique power moves in this thing. I thought it was very entertaining, some good near falls. This thing was intriguing. I actually found myself involved in this matchup. It was not a trash matchup whatsoever. You know, on paper, you know that uh, I, I think that Bobby Lashley can put on a good match. I just hate him on the microphone. And then Apollo Crews is very good in the ring, so I don't know. It, it made for a pretty good matchup here at the opener of Payback. At the end, I thought for sure that the Hurt Business would play a role in the finish, but they do not. Bobby Lashley locks in his submission maneuver, and that is it. Apollo Crews actually taps out to Bobby Lashley, so not only does he lose the U.S. Championship, but he also loses to Bobby Lashley via submission, and after the matchup, uh, Apollo Crews attacks Bobby Lashley. You can see, like, a bunch of passion in his eyes. You're like, oh, shit, Brad, what the hell's going on here? And he attacks Bobby Lashley, and the Hurt Business beat up on Apollo Crews, and he's like, you know, I'm getting my championship back. I'm getting my championship back, yada, yada, yada. So, very, very big news here, as Bobby Lashley is your new United States Champion, and I knew, uh, you know, with the Hurt Business at ringside, I felt really sad for Apollo because I felt like he would lose. I want to say I predicted Bobby Lashley to win. I can't remember, but Bobby Lashley is your new United States champion. I think this is his second reign, right? Because he won it back in the day. But this is pretty cool to see. Even though I didn't want to see Cruz's championship reign end, I still am enjoying this to see what comes of it. But pretty solid matchup. Good opener. Let's see what happens the rest of the way. But congratulations to Trashley for winning the U.S. title. Next up, guys, was the singles match between Big E and Sheamus and a matchup that I was actually kind of looking forward to because both of these guys are super duper physical. Both of them are fantastic in the ring. Very underrated too. I think both of them are super underrated. Nobody really gives these guys credit. Very physical styles in the ring, which you guys know I'm a huge fan of. So seeing these guys tie up, I was a big fan. I was looking forward to this one and they did not prove me wrong. I think this is a very enjoyable matchup. I think this was a good, hard-hitting matchup. Very much like Apollo Crews and Bobby Lashley. Not very finessed. It was more physical. You know, hard hits. Lots of big physical moves. Just hard-hitting stuff between both big men. We had some dives to the outside. Just a lot of hard-hitting stuff that I loved and enjoyed. And it looks like this Big E singles run is looking like we are on full course because Big E picks up the victory over Sheamus after a big ending. Very enjoyable matchup. You know, I'm not going to say it was out of this world or anything, but definitely worth the watch. And I enjoyed it. I, I found myself intrigued the entire way. And Big E was rocking a sick-ass All That attire. For my fans around my age or a little older, we had some All That. He was rocking an All That attire. I thought that was pretty fantastic as well. But yes, Big E does pick up the win. I thought this was an enjoyable matchup. Very hard-hitting and just my style. I'm very much looking forward to where Big E goes from here. 
Next up, guys, was the singles match between Matt Riddle taking on Trash Corbin. Before this matchup, Trash Corbin tweeted out, Tonight, I proved that Matt Riddle is a failure in a WWE ring. By the way, he's already proven that he's a failure at home. And I just had to say RIP for my brother Matt after that because Jesus Christ, he ended that man with that tweet. That was a fire tweet from Trash Corbin. But he comes up short here tonight in the matchup with Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle does defeat him with the floating bro. You know, coming into this, I thought the match would be a little bit better. It was physical. It was decent, but it wasn't anything immaculate. I thought these guys had an extra gear they could have hit, but they did not. Now, Trash Corbin isn't great in the ring by any means, but I feel like when you put him with the right guy, I feel like he can have a decent little football game, if you get what I'm saying. That did not take place, though. Matt Riddle put him down, and Trash Corbin actually attacked him before the bell. It was like during uh, Matt Riddle's entrance before the pyro goes off, or as the pyro was going off, Trash Corbin hits. Trash would hit Matt Riddle and take him out, but it was too much for Trash at the end of the day. Matt Riddle gets the victory, which I agree with. Time to build up Matt Riddle slowly. This is a good first win for him here on pay-per-view. Let's move him into something better and more serious. Next up, guys, was the Women's Tag Team Championship match. Bayley and Sasha set to defend their women's tag titles against Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Coming in, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler are two of my least favorite women in all of WWE. So having this matchup booked, I mean, the, the women's tag titles really don't mean a John Brown thing anyway, and they shouldn't have even been created. So if they did win them, I wouldn't really care. And they did win them. Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, they actually did win the Women's Tag Team Championship, so they are your new champions. This is our second new champion of the night, and I don't really care about that part. I'm more focused on Bailey and Sasha. We did not get a crack or a heel turn after the matchup. However, I do think we are building towards one for Sasha and Bailey. Again, still should have been for both championships heading into Survivor Series. I'm going to keep mentioning that until the end of time. But Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, they get on the they get on the microphone after the matchup, and Nia Jax is prancing around the ring, looking like a John Brown jackass, like yelling into the mic and like going, let's go, let's go, and looking very cringe. It was awful. It just, just terrible. Good lord. But anyways, they're your new women's tag team champions, and we, we saw this coming. I knew this was coming. I even predicted this to happen, and yeah, I mean, I, I guess we're going to see where we go from here with Sasha and Bayley, but I am pretty much just waiting on a heel turn from Sasha at this point. But Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler are your new women's tag team champions. One thing I want to mention, guys, before we get into the next matchup is that Shayna Baszler tapped out Bayley using Sasha Banks' arm. I know I didn't get into the really result of the matchup and how it played out, but Sasha Banks and Bayley were both in the ring. Shayna, like, tied them up to where Sasha's arm is the arm that choked out Bayley. Very good symbolism, very good storytelling there. Forgot to mention it when we were covering that matchup, so I wanted to get that in, but let's move on to our next matchup. Next up, guys, we had Randy Orton taking on Keith Lee in a singles matchup, and a matchup that I was much looking forward to. You know, these these two guys, you know, some would call it a fantasy matchup, you know. Both of these guys are a lot of people's favorite wrestler. You know, Keith Lee, one of your favorites in NXT, comes up to the main roster. Randy Orton, long-time guy in WWE, so I would not be, you know, shocked to see somebody say this is a fantasy matchup for them. Not a personal fantasy matchup, but I was excited to see this thing play out here, and my God, it was not long at all, man. I mean, Keith Lee put away Randy Orton. I mean, we had some good physical stuff going into it. We got the draping DDT. Randy Orton goes for an RKO. He reverses it into a spirit bomb and one, two, three. Keith Lee defeats Randy Orton. So this tells me that they are very, very big on Keith Lee as they should be. I think that he is going to be a future champion for years to come. And this just proved it right here, man. I totally agree with this. I think this is the right move. I even said it in the predictions video. I said this is absolutely what needs to take place. Keith Lee needs this victory over Randy Orton. This thrusts him up. And with it being in that dominant fashion, I think it's safe to say that Keith Lee is putting himself in big time championship main event level already here on the main roster. Great win for Keith Lee. I, I enjoyed it. I expected it. Didn't expect it to come that fast. I would have liked to seen 10 more minutes of it, but still damn good football game. Really, really enjoyed it. Great stuff between the two, and I cannot wait to see where Keith Lee goes from here. Next up, guys, we have the tag team match between Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy taking on the Mysterio family in Ray and Dominic. Now, coming into this matchup, I made one thing clear. I was like, bro, isn't this weird how they did it completely backwards, right? Shouldn't the tag team match be first? It should have went tag team match, then street fight, then eye for an eye. Isn't that sick? You know what I'm saying? Because if I go eye for an eye, like if I'm fighting a guy in the street and we both start clawing each other's eyes out, when the hell, like the next thing would be death, right? The next thing where one of us is going to get 
seriously hurt or dead. I highly doubt we're gonna be, like, helping each other up and shit after that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like a tag team match, a regular wrestling match is like a respect thing. Like, it's kind of civil and stuff like that. If we're going after each other's eyes, man, after that, it's it's fight to the death. So I thought that was a bit odd, but this matchup was solid. I enjoyed this matchup. I like the entertaining part of it. I love the ending of the matchup, how everything played out at the end. I think the storytelling was fantastic. Rollins is just beautiful. Murphy is just beautiful. Ray is just great. Dominic is definitely getting better every time. They did a great job in this matchup protecting him against his weaknesses. I do not like the way that Buddy Murphy sold the 619 to Dominic. He made it look like Brock Lesnar hit his ass with an F5. Like he flopped all over the damn ring looking like Shawn Michaels SummerSlam 2005 or something. Dominic's frog splash is still ugly. I do not like that. But overall, I think they did a fantastic job in this matchup. I was thoroughly entertained. Everybody involved did great. Ending sequence when they went for like the buckle bomb kick to the back of the neck like Young Buck style and Rey Mysterio reversing that and making Rollins get kicked in the face was beautiful. Just beautiful stuff there at the end with the execution. I called that the Mysterio family would win here to, you know, give us a little evenry on the rivalry, but uh, I hope to God that this thing is over because I don't want to see these guys in a matchup again. I do not want to see that. We've seen it long enough. It looks like we're going to get a Buddy Murphy versus Seth Rollins matchup because after the matchup, Buddy Murphy, you could tell that Seth Rollins was definitely upset with Murphy and looked like he was annoyed by Murphy. So well, I guess we'll just have to see how that plays out. But moving forward, man, awesome matchup. Dominic and Ray get the win, and I, I, I guess I agree with it. It didn't really matter to me, but that is your matchup. Pretty good stuff right here. And for our main event, guys, we had the match that I was most looking forward to, the triple threat, no holds bar, triple threat, I think I already effing said that, triple threat, Blue Universal Championship match between The Fiend, the returning Roman Reigns, and Braun Strowman. Now, coming into this, we had so many things taking place. We had this heel-like Roman Reigns character. We just got it revealed on SmackDown that he was working hand-in-hand -hand with Paul Heyman. They were discussing the contract. They said that he was going to win. They said that he would wreck everybody and leave at payback. Braun Strowman coming in with his storyline with The Fiend and, and Alexa Bliss and all of that. I mean, we had a ton of stuff coming in. You know, would Retribution play a part in this matchup? This was a matchup that I was most looking forward to. I was super duper invested into this match and I got a lot to say about what took place. So starting off, okay, so the matchup starts off, The Fiend comes down and he gets to the ring and then Braun Strowman attacks him out of nowhere, right? So it's like all dark. We kind of got like just what happened to tra with Trash Corbin and Matt Riddle. Very similar stuff. Bray Wyatt comes down. He doesn't have The Fiend chance championship, by the way. He had the regular Blue Universal title. I don't know why the hell he didn't come out with the Fiend one. Probably because he knew that he wasn't going to hold on to that bitch for very long. So he comes down. Braun Strowman takes him out. They ring the bell, and the commentary team, I shit you not, does not mention Roman Reigns a single time. They did not mention his name not one single time the entire time that Braun Strowman and The Fiend were fighting. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, it, are, are they idiotic? Like, what the hell's going on? It's not like it was like, oh, is he in or is he out? Roman Reigns is out of this matchup. Nothing like that. It was legitimately just, they didn't mention him. They didn't mention him because they know how stupid it is and they wanted you, they thought you were a fool and thought you wouldn't think that, oh my god, isn't Roman Reigns supposed to be in this thing? So I, I was completely completely dumbfounded at this. So they don't mention Roman Reigns. The Fiend and Braun Strowman beat the hell out of each other. They go all over the the arena, kind of. They, they tackle each other off the stage, and they got the steel steps involved, and they get the announce table involved. Pretty hard-hitting stuff. I'd say this match was better than their SummerSlam matchup. So they battle. They do war. Coming up at the end, The Fiend hits a superplex on Braun Strowman, breaking the ring. So the ring breaks down. The ropes fall. The classic Big Show Brock Lesnar ring collapse spot that we've seen over the years. And they're all laid there, laid to waste. And here comes the big dog. He's got Paul Heyman with him. He's got his contract with him for the matchup. He signs the contract, runs down to the ring, tries to pin both men. It doesn't happen. The Fiend ends up locking in the mandible claw on Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns takes him to Dick Kick City. He falls out of the ring. Spear to Braun Strowman. And one, two, three, Roman Reigns is your new Universal Champion. No retribution. Nothing. Re it just didn't make sense to me. I don't know. Like, I understand the heel antics, him not showing up till the end of the Triple threat. Yeah, very heel-like, right? But the commentary team didn't mention it. How dumb does it make Braun Strowman and The Fiend look if you go out, say you went out for a triple threat match, right? You go out for a triple threat match. Okay, the Braun Strowman getting the jump on The Fiend, okay, that's cool. That makes sense. But wouldn't it be him taking him out and then waiting on Roman Reigns to be like, okay, I gotta get, you know, a little bit of damage in The Fiend before Roman comes down so it's not every man for himself. I'm the bigger man. They're probably gonna team up on me. Makes sense, right? No, he just keeps beating on The Fiend and Braun and 
The Fiend, if you put yourself in their shoes, talking about a triple threat match, where that you would be wondering to yourself, where the hell is the third competitor? Where the hell's Roman Reigns? Where the hell's Paul Heyman? I know they're in cahoots. What the hell's going on? And the fact that they didn't even consider that makes their characters look like idiots. They look like a stupid idiot moron. So that is something that I wanted to say about this match. I'm very happy with the result. I'm super glad that the big dog is the new Universal Champion. I think the Fiend's been been dead for a, for a damn long time. You know, I, I feel that way. Uh, you guys know that I think the ship sailed on Braun Strowman in 2017 and uh, come hell in a cell, you might as well have buried Bray Wyatt six feet deep as the Fiend character after that matchup with Seth Rollins. So both of these guys are taken out and we have the big dog. No retro Distribution show up, no nothing like that. He just wins off a spear after a dick kick to the Fiend Bray Wyatt. Uh, Alexa Bliss played no role in this matchup, so it just showed her backstage during the matchup for no reason, I guess, because it showed her watching the matchup as the show, as the matchup progressed. We got nothing with her. We got nothing with Retribution. I mean, I guess this gives you a reason. Like, I don't know, man. I, I just thought it was very underwhelming for a main event with all the stuff that we had. I was so excited going into this. And I'm still happy with the result, but the matchup, I thought we were going to get a legit match, and then something was going to happen at the end. We got nothing, so I guess I just feel like I, I was, I don't know, I felt like the rug was cut up from under me or something. I'm not sure. I would love to know what you guys think down in the comment section below, but that was your WWE payback. We had a lot of new champions on this night. We had some very interesting things take place. I am interested to see where Roman goes from here. I wanted to see new music from Roman, a new look possibly, but he still looked like a thousand bucks. He was looking great, and I I'm just happy to have the title off of Braun and The Fiend, so I'm actually looking forward to this Paul Heyman Roman Reigns run, and I guess we'll have to stay tuned to Friday Night SmackDown to see what comes of that, but I don't know, man. I guess I just got my hopes too far up, I guess. I'm not sure, but that does it for my Payback 2020 review, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know what you thought of the show down in the comment section below. Did you feel it was underwhelming as well? Let me know. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at my damn toys. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE action figure videos, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.